I would like to welcome all the different groups here in our audience, planning and geography students and those from different departments, uh, faculty members, school administrators, members of the Capital District Planner Association, members of the Upstate APA Board, members of the press, and community members from around the region. I would also like to extend, extend a special welcome to distinguished guest speakers here with us this evening. Congressman Paul Tonko, hopefully soon, Albany County Executive Mike Breslin, University of Albany Provost Susan Phillips, and of course, tonight's keynote speaker, Ms. Kalina Tachieva. We've had a wonderful day of programming here so far, as you can probably see in your bill, and we want to continue that in the same planning and geography spirit here this evening. Just a bit of a background for those who are less familiar with the purpose of this day. World Town Planning Day, celebrated each November 8th and 9th, was originally created in 1949 by the late professor Carlos Maria de la Puerla of the University of Buenos Aires, with the goal of advancing public and professional interest in planning. GIS Day, celebrated each November 17th, was started more recently in 1998. It also has similar public goals and defines itself as a grassroots educational event that enables geographic information systems, uh, users, and vendors to open their doors to schools, businesses, and the general public to showcase real-world applications of GIS. Since our department isn't the biggest in the world, we, might, we like to make it a little bit easier on ourselves and combine the two events. Um, before I introduce our first speaker, I just want to give a special thanks to the Department of Geography and Planning, and particularly to CDPA for their sponsorship of this evening's program. This is certainly a banner year for us students and a partnership with the organization. We hope to continue this partnership and plan other great events in the future, but maybe, say, with 10 or so email exchanges per day rather than our normal. And with that, I'll ask you to put your hands together for our first speaker, who's barely had time to catch his breath since his run-up the last Tuesday, our Congressman Paul Thomas. Thank you, Chris, and uh, good evening, everybody, on what is a uh, taste of winter this evening. And, uh, that puts music to the ears of the county exec that they prepare their fleet. It's good to join with Mike Preston and with uh, Sue Phillips, uh, your provost, and with Lena and all who are participating with this great group of planners to be, uh, the Graduate Planning Students Association, and certainly the, uh, uh, the Department of Geography and Planning. And I thank you for the kind invitation to join with you and offer a few comments, uh, a few moments worth of uh, at least insight and uh, foresight as we move forward uh, as a nation. Uh, as an engineer involved in the political arena, uh, I embrace planning wholeheartedly. Uh, planning is the sake for the sake of understanding our goals and planning for the most efficient and effective outcomes. Uh, if one does not plan, if groups do not plan, if government does not plan, how do we know the charge of mission? We need to know the goals, we need to know the efforts that we're assembling. And uh, at the same time, there are very interesting dynamics, very powerful dynamics, compelling dynamics that inspire us to put together more thoughtfulness as we move forward in government. Sue and I were just talking, Sue Phillips and I were just talking about the recent elections. And my opinion, I won't share hers, but my opinion is that uh, we have moved to some knee jerk reactions in government that are tremendously dangerous in a time when we need to be thoughtful with the complexities of our given moment and the additional complexities that the future holds. Uh, without the evidence and, and impact of planning, sound planning, we will not achieve, I believe, the uh, ultimate success that is uh, impacted uh, by the kind of thoughtfulness that needs to be part of the work that we do. The thoughtful planning can be the key for future uh, communities which will help move our economy forward and certainly that will make a better, more efficient use of energy. I chaired the Energy Committee of the State Assembly for some 15 years. The last 15 of my 25 years of service there. And I'm now involved in science and tech uh, in the House of Representatives in my first term. And it is absolutely essential that we have a comprehensive energy plan for this nation. And planning, urban planning, community planning, statewide planning, 
can embrace that energy discussion also. If we do not put together a comprehensive energy plan, we will have failed in the attempt to grow jobs, in my opinion, and to reduce our dependency on fossil-based fuels. The job market in the future can be strengthened by the innovation economy, by the clean energy economy, and by green thinking. And um, therefore, in the energy sector, for the energy sector of it all, it is important for us to put together, as I indicated, a comprehensive plan. When we talk comprehensive, we talk all sectors of the economy. We talk all sectors of energy. And uh, in so doing, we incorporate the transportation route, in addition to the more traditional use of energy to run our factories, heat our homes, and uh, empower our industries and uh, businesses. Uh, in so doing, when we look at the transportation corridor, uh, I think it's important for us to look at the most efficient form of travel. Uh, we have grown the lanes of our, of our infrastructure out there, of our highway system. We now see roundabouts as the big thing now, taking us into suburbia. Think of all the idle time that we are incorporating and that sort of incentive uh, that comes with uh, all of the added incentives to move into sprawl. I think that day of thinking has got to be turned around so that when I was at NYSERVA serving as president and CEO of NYSERVA, the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, we talked the concept and are still working away at the concept of green transportation corridors. And that would invoke a sound investment in rail, in high-speed rail, in commuter rail that enables us then to have the hookups with the various bus fleets that might be essential or some sort of travel that connects us from the rail into the inner community. But I think it's a way to grow a strong urban agenda to connect again to the rail corridor that is the hub of the past that can become the revitalization of our future. And it puts together a soundness of travel that allows us to use the most energy efficient form of travel, invoking rail, inspiring the use of rail, growing the ridership. That will allow for us to be very sound, very sturdy in acknowledging transportation improvements into the future because we cannot continue to commit to this evidence of growing capacity on our highways. We're just going to run out of lane space and we're going to continue to impact the environment with the growth of the carbon footprint, with uh, global warming and all the factors that uh, respond uh, negatively uh, to our stewardship of the environment. It also is important for us to bear in mind that as we continue to rely on fossil-based fuels, as we continue to uh, inspire the growth of vehicle traffic, uh, we're promoting uh, the share of energy consumer dollars to go into the banks and into the uh, treasuries of some very unfriendly governments out there to the United States. So I think it's a no-brainer that we, again, embrace the soundness of transportation in our planning. I would also speak to the, uh, the waterfront opportunities that we have across the map of New York and certainly this country. Recently, I hosted a waterfront conference on behalf of the 21st Congressional District community. And we did that because of the confluence that this district uh, uses as its definition of the Hudson and Mohawk Rivers, uh, two mighty waters that uh, wrote our history. In fact, we've also uh, often been uh, quoted as indicating that the, uh, the waters of this congressional district are the ink that wrote the history. And uh, that history, that heritage, can, if it's embraced well enough, make us a stronger sense of place. Now, as planners, you want that power of place to be the outcome. And I think that as we create place to see uh, in a format that allows us to better understand the heritage and history of the many locations across the, uh, uh, across the geography of the 21st Congressional District, we can create a stronger sense of identity, which I think is important in growing the quality of life and the impact of planning that can be felt uh, onto, the, uh, onto the residents of any given region. With our waterfront conference, it was so successful, we had a keynote, uh, someone from the Waterfront Center, which does international focus on waterfront discovery and development. And uh, it was interesting to see what communities are doing around the world to incorporate the sense of water flow through their community that really uses that as the ambiance uh, of their planet. It's the place to go, it's the place to be, the accessibility to these wonderful locations, the waterfronts. Uh, will become prime, I think, as we grow a stronger urban agenda. The urban cores of this state, and certainly of this country, are the hub of heritage, of history, and of services. And if we recognize that, we have this golden richness 
that enables us, I think, gives us the virtue of bringing back urban cores. I have shared with the White House, with the urban-related uh, policy people in the White House, and with policymakers in the House of Representatives that we need to go back to a strong urban policy to enable us to take communities and build on their past, but give them cutting-edge innovation of the future. I represent a host of communities, a necklace of communities, once called mill towns. They are now rusted, uh, or at least uh, past their heyday. We can bring back that vitality by developing a waterfront uh, agenda. We have, from the impact of our waterfront conference, created a waterfront task force, a Mighty Waters task force, that is now putting together committees. We've assigned committees, we've structured committees, assigned membership to uh, the committees of the 25 or so people who have joined uh, from all perspectives, from sportsmen to business people to community leaders to planners to uh, heritage folks, a number of people who are putting together a thought process now that will feed us the policy uh, uh, recommendations, the advocacy for resources, and the overall tone that can be established in allowing us to approach with a regional strategy the waterfront definition, the waterfront comeback that will empower the urban agenda of, when coupled with the transportation corridor concepts of green transportation corridors. I think we've got a lot of work that we can do at the Washington level, at the state level, work in partnership with our local uh, government officials as we uh, all put together a public sector uh, marriage of, of all levels, then partner with the private sector to create the maximum outcome. But it all begins with the soundness of planning, with the virtue of planning, with the talent of planning, with the professionalism of planning. And speaking to a group of individuals who are just entering into that field, I just want to encourage you and inspire you to move forward because we need your talent more than ever before. It is important for us in the, in the very competitiveness of this local economy to be as sharp as we can be. We can strengthen our manufacturing base, we can strengthen our innovation economy, we can put investment into industry and business, but we also need to have quality of life that accompanies that. Because when companies are looking around the world, they're going to look for the talent, they're going to look for the workforce, and the quality of life. And in addition to that, the tiebreaker can be the power of place. As planners, you can drive that agenda of power of place. Make that area that anyone wants to choose to be home as powerful an impact in their quality of life as possible. And that begins and ends with the soundness of ideal planning. So thank you for your willingness to serve as planners and for your advocacy of planning. And uh, I wish you well in your career path. Thank you so much.